So I'm a Celtics fan, which means that I've seen quite a few players come and go from this team over the last couple of years. Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, Isaiah Thomas. You can go as far back to Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and all those guys. And weirdly enough, the rumors about Marcus Smart being available for a first round pick from the Celtics, that might end up devastating me more than any of those moves. Maybe it's because the Celtics drafted Marcus Smart and I've seen him just get better a little bit every single year. Maybe it's because he's just one of the tougher guys in the NBA. One of those players who just does all the dirty work that no one else wants to do in terms of taking charges, defense, and everything you saw with the first 30 seconds of this thing. But he's also improved as an offensive player as well. His playmaking has gotten better over the years to the point where he's actually not a bad pick and roll player for Boston. He can be a secondary ball handler for you. So he, he really has served as a, a backup who at times can lead an offense. Now when it comes to his scoring, yeah, it's been a little different. Uh, I think he um, the shooting is what it is, right? This one game against the Lakers, he had a bunch of outside shots. Not the norm for him at all. And what would make it worse is he would only need to make like one three and then he'll start feeling himself and he'll take a bunch of shots that he really shouldn't be taking and sometimes Marcus can be an offensive liability. But even with all that said, the Celtics are a better team when Marcus Smart is in the game as opposed to not being in the game, which is why these trade rumors, they puzzle me a little bit. But as we dive into this video further, we'll, we'll discuss some of the things in terms of his contract and what he could potentially get on the open market and all that. But if the Celtics really did decide to move him, they'd be losing something. In terms of defense, toughness, flopping, they would be losing some stuff. But the rumors are definitely out there. A couple of names being Lou Williams and Tyreek Evans, who are drastically different players than him. But we'll have to see. Now, one thing that we have seen is that Terry Rozier has gone up to a different level this season for the Celtics and really just recently because Marcus Smart had a incident where he got kind of angry over the last shot he took against the Lakers and he hurt his hand and Kyrie Irving's been out for a little bit which means Terry Rozier has been getting more minutes and the dude has been kind of balling out for the Celtics creating his own shots a lot of the time being pull-up jumpers he also can hit threes off the dribble which of course is a skill that's really valuable in today's NBA. And while he doesn't have Marcus's toughness, I would say Rozier isn't exactly a wimp of a player. Came into the starting lineup and didn't seem overwhelmed or any of that. It helps that he's been playing under Brad Stevens for a few years now. And I understand that Rozier has, been, be, has become kind of a meme because of Danny Ainge not being willing to trade him for almost anything and if you look up Terry Rozier on Reddit you can find some pretty funny posts but it seems like he's kind of backing it up another important thing a contrast with him and Marcus Smart is Rozier's contract is just a lot cheaper mentioned a moment ago how Marcus Smart will be entering restricted free agency this offseason someone could give him like 12 million dollars because that's kind of where the NBA is right now. Now, there are not as many teams with cap space as there have been in the past, but even so, maybe the Celtics fear that someone, just one team, would be willing to throw some money at Marcus Smart that they would not be willing to match. And so as a result, they say, well, Terry Rozier's been pretty okay anyway. We might as well just use him. And if I can dive a little bit deeper into some of these things, if we just look at the Celtics compared to some of the other top teams in the NBA, because I think that's when you really see Marcus Smart's value. First and foremost, if there is a list of guys in the league who can actually defend Steph Curry, I think Marcus Smart is like one of those guys. Because he, he just roughs them up, you know? And Marcus is one of the toughest guys to screen for in the NBA as well. And Curry uses screens a lot on ball and off ball. Uh, Marcus could also just be good against the Warriors in general because he's a defender who typically is able to defend guys taller than him so he can get physical with Kevin Durant. He can bother Klay Thompson some. I mean, Marcus really is one of the more versatile defenders in the NBA, and I do think 
you would need him if the Celtics uh, are going to be making the NBA Finals this season or potentially next year. And with how ugly it looks in Cleveland right now, I think it's beginning to enter my brain for the first time in a long time that LeBron James might not actually be entering the NBA Finals just because of all the things going wrong with the Cavaliers. But of course, Kevin Love just got hurt. He could be coming back. And then if anything, Cleveland could just be a hell of an offensive team and they could get there anyway. But if we talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers a bit, a team that the Celtics could be meeting in the Eastern Conference Finals, or, you know, I mean, the Raptors have something to say about this, and I'll talk about them as well. I mean, we've already seen that Isaiah Thomas is clearly not himself. And even if he is able to get closer to what he was with Boston a year ago, as time goes on here with the Cavs, and if these two teams were to meet in... uh, was as of right now it would be the conference finals if Cleveland were to beat the Raptors I mean putting Marcus Smart on an already reduced Isaiah Thomas could take Isaiah Thomas completely out of the series and at that point LeBron James would have basically just Kevin Love as his other guy who can do stuff on offense and I mean Cleveland's offense has even been pretty rough lately so Maybe that's the difference between you making the NBA Finals or not. Now, are you willing to risk losing Marcus Smart for nothing for a potential NBA Finals appearance? That's a tough call. You know, I can understand you going either way. And I can, I mean, me personally, I would maybe lean towards wanting to get something for the guy anyway. Now, there is also the flip side of, is Marcus Smart really that good? Is he really the difference between you making a Finals and not making a Finals? I mean, defensively, yes, as an all-around player. I mean, look, in the playoffs, the fact that Marcus can't shoot, that will get exposed more. Teams will just choose to not defend him. They're going to leave him wide open, and they're just going to dare him to shoot. And sure, he'll have the one-off game where he just makes like six threes. But for the most part, that is a sound defensive strategy. So... Again, do I think Marcus Smart is worth like $12 million for the Celtics team? No, but I do think it's possible that one team is going to offer him that in restricted free agency. So, yeah, I can understand the rationale, even if it kind of sentimentally irks me, just because, I don't know, something about Marcus Smart, you know? Just being on the Celtics for as long as he has and all that, and the defensive plays he makes. Anyway, let's get back to um, how they compare to the teams in the East, I guess. If you look at the Toronto Raptors, DeMar DeRozan's been going nuts this year. But the one type of player that DeRozan still has trouble with are the really strong dudes who he has a little tougher time either posting up or getting that extra little uh, inch or two closer to the basket because he can outmuscle you a little bit. Like whenever he faces Jimmy Butler, he has kind of a tough time. Um, Marcus Smart, I think, fits the profile of that sort of a guy that could bother DeMar DeRozan, get physical with him. Now, I say all that, and DeRozan, for the most part, has been pretty good against the Celtics. I mean, he did shoot 8 for 22 in the last game, uh, but he was excellent the one before that for 43 points. So, you know, I don't think you just insert Marcus Smart and DeMar DeRozan is suddenly, like, nullified. But I think it's the difference between, like, You know, he might still get 25 points against you, but is it going to take him an extra three or four shots to do it? Which, that can be the difference between you beating the Raptors or losing to them in seven games or something, you know? I think he could also be effective against Kyle Lowry. And I think Lowry is even more susceptible just because he's a smaller guy. Now, he's a better outside shooter than DeRozan, so he could still have ways of beating Marcus and pick and rolls and stuff, but, you know, from a physical standpoint, Lowry, I mean, what, six... Somewhere between six feet and six foot three. I just don't feel like looking at it at the moment. So there are reasons, I think, to keep the guy, mainly for defense, what he can do in the playoffs, the hustle plays, and how he has been a, a not bad playmaker off the bench for you. But then the reasons to move him are you're already up against the salary cap right now. You have a backup point guard in Terry Rozier who's been looking pretty okay lately. Definitely gives you more offense than Marcus Smart can. And then there's also the element of 
just the money, you know? Like, is someone going to give Marcus Smart a $10 million deal, you know, and you're already up against the cap? Because it's restricted for agency, of course. I think my thing would be, if you chose to go this route, could you then replace him with a uh, potential player who can make a real impact? Like, if they acquire Tyreek Evans or Lou Williams, right, to where they'll probably get worse defensively, but they could also see a jump in offense. So right now, the Celtics for the season are, what, first in defense, and they are 18th in offense. Let's say if Marcus Smart's gone and Tyreek Evans is now in the Marcus Smart spot, right? Say if that made them drop to, I don't know, 6th or 7th in defense, but they also jumped to like 11th in offense. Does that make you a better team? Well, potentially it does. Now it's possible that I'm underestimating or potentially overestimating how much their offense would improve and how much their defense would get worse. I mean, Brad Stevens is a hell of a coach. And his his ways of just hiding bad defenders and forcing the defense or forcing the offense to do things they don't want to do and switching at the right times, it's all great. But can you maintain being the best defense in the NBA if your good defenders are now Al Horford, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Aaron Baines, Daniel Tice sometimes, and that's kind of it. Like, losing a lockdown defender hurts. But who knows, maybe the offensive trade-off would be enough. Many different options. But I think that's going to be my stance on it, is if you can replace Marcus with someone who can really do something, then ultimately I think I'd be okay with it. Now, if you just simply traded him for a first-round pick and that was it, that that's all you got, I would not be as happy with that because, yeah, I think that could be the difference between you losing a playoff series or winning one. I think Marcus Smart is that good of a defensive player. And when you look at how close the Celtics are with the Raptors and then with all the stuff going on with the Cavaliers, I mean, yeah. Now, would would it would it give them a real chance against Golden State? No. Like, they're, they're still going to lose to them regardless. This is assuming they can even get to the finals. Like, I'm, I'm still waiting for Cleveland to just turn it on because that's what happens with LeBron James-led teams. A lot of different options with Marcus Smart, man. But uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Deadline's in a couple days.